some time ago on one of these very videos, I complained that manufacturers are still using those zero delay encoder boards, which are just, ugh, let's just, yeah, let's leave it at that. Not upgradable, really slow to respond, just not good overall. And since then, GB2040 has really taken off and it's powered a ton of products out there. So there's all sorts of button boxes out there now that you know, are using GP2040. They're all over AliExpress, People's Discords, you know, and other manufacturers as well. And I've reviewed a couple of them. I love them. They're, they play great. I love it. But if you're a lever user, you've kind of been left out in the cold. There's not really any manufacturers I can think of that have been willing to put GP2040 in a lever and just buttons based product. Well, that is until today. I'm Zeros with the Arcade Stick, and Sonicon has sent over the Titan Strike. And I know folks on Reddit, you might have seen them announce this stick and like, that sounds kind of um, a weird name, a little overkill, kind of 90s, I don't know. Yeah, I get it. Uh, is it actually a good product? Um, that's what I'm going to set out to find out today. And I'm going to you know, tear it down, give you my first impressions do a little bit of lab work to make sure it lives up to the hype, uh, and just give you my feelings on what I liked and what I didn't. Yes, they did send it over the review unit, but the opinions are my own. And finally, I'm gonna tell you, hey, is this worth a purchase or is it worth a pass? So stay tuned, keep watching. Let's do a quick overview of the Sonicon Titan Strike. Anyhow, this is a Standard Vulix layout, so if you're familiar with most joystick layouts that are you know, kind of since the Street Fighter 4 age, the default has been Vulix. Um, I'd say 90% or more use this layout, so you have a kind of slight slope up and then a plateau for your buttons. And if you're used to other sticks, um, you know, Vulix is probably what you came from, and if you're moving to Vulix here, you know, you don't have as much transition time. So, you know, that's nice. Uh, we do have a Samuel lever and Samuel action buttons. However, the option buttons, just to sound compare real quick, these are not Samuel. I can tell right away. The caps are higher, they're clickier, and the ones on the side, same thing, which I'm fine with uh, using cheaper option buttons that are you know, just slightly harder to press. I mean, these aren't really resisting, but they are you know, sitting higher and yeah, they're much clickier. It just makes the experience of pressing the option button more deliberate. So I, I don't feel bad about it. Um, up next, we are using a GP2040 in here. That's where they're advertising their lightning fast reaction time, you know, sub one MS and all that stuff. Uh, and they are using a I2C based screen here. So you can see, you know, if you press your joystick, you'll see it. Uh, obviously I don't have it plugged in right now, but uh, button presses here will be seen. You won't see option buttons being pressed, but you also see what input mode you're in, which is useful. Sometimes you'll be in X input and then wondering why connecting it to a PS4 doesn't work or what have you. And <clears throat> should also show you turbo shots and SOCD mode, even though we don't really have SOCD there. Okay, uh, otherwise do have an acrylic layer for artwork and this is the default artwork. Now, something I noticed in my initial testing is that our joystick ball is not mounted correctly. I should not be able to unscrew this. So this was not installed quite correctly and two of the dust washers are on top. We should have one underneath the metal case here. And once again, they are advertising this is all metal. And yeah, it is. Um, and it feels okay. Uh, it has a nice weight to it. So it's not the heaviest case out there. <laughs> I definitely know because I have like what feels like 20 pound AFS 18s. But you know, it feels relatively solid. Um, I've tested it on solid surface, pushing around, feels okay. And we'll see that in the lab. Uh, so on the side, it's a little close. We have four more option buttons. Uh, I do wish they were labeled. You know me, I like documentation. Uh, what else? On the bottom, we have these kind of standoffs and they can be unscrewed. They don't hold anything in. 
Uh, they do have rubber pads on them and six screws here. Nothing on this side. Up top, I know I was a little disappointed to see this because I feel like in 2023, USB-C should be the standard, not A especially. A going A to A uh, it just hurts. <laughs> and there is an included A to A cable uh, because that connection type is just rare. Usually what you'll see is uh, kind of that printer at USB-B or USB-C. And I feel like we should move to USB-C, especially after I looked at the PXN X9 and that has USB-C. Uh, just kind of wish that was there. I know it costs a little bit more, but I think it's worth it. All right, uh, we've looked at all the sides. And yes, there is acrylic here, so you can absolutely change this art. Uh, I mean, I think it's okay, but we could have done without the circles and stuff, but okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, let's move on to get some dimensions. Um, so far, I I'm liking what I'm feeling. The joystick feels good. I mean, it is standard sandwich ALF, standard sandwich buttons. They feel all right. If you know, you're not a sandwich fan, I'm sure we can change these out. We'll see more once we take it apart. Let's get some dimensions on the Titan Strike. So horizontally, we're looking at about, with option buttons, about 14 inches or 355 millimeters. On the vertical, we're looking at about nine and a quarter inches or 235-ish millimeters. Now, width-wise, A measurement there we are getting just about shy of two inches or about 50 millimeters but with the joystick added you're adding about two more inches so four or about a hundred millimeters let's take a look at the weight on the titan strike it's not the heaviest controller i've reviewed but yeah it's up there five pounds 10.7 ounces so yeah it has a nice heft to it feels good in the lap um doesn't feel flimsy, of course, because it's all metal. But that's a good weight. It shouldn't be something that's terribly hard to carry around. But um, if you have a long set of day trips, uh, it might become a little cumbersome. Let's do some quick Steam Deck testing with the Titan Strike. And we'll also get some dimensions while we're at it. So, yep, we can tell in the OS it is working. So as usual with GP2040, one, I'm pretty confident in it working, and two, I do recommend you keep it in X input mode. So anyway, we're going to load up the game, and while we're doing that, let's take some quick dimensions. Now the Titan Strike horizontally is going to be that limiting factor, but depth-wise, you're going to want at least about 13, 14 inches or so. And again, width-wise, you're going to need about 14 inches. So there's that. Um, let's just see if it works in game. And again, I'm pretty confident, yeah, we're already getting it to work. So as you can see, it is responding and it does work just fine. So there we go. The Titan Strike absolutely works on the Steam Deck, but of course it's not the most portable option. So there is that. All right, let's go ahead and open up the Titan Strike. Now there are six screws on the bottom. You'll just want a Phillips PH2 and make sure you're putting down some pillows, towels, or something soft while you're working on it. Uh, and if you want, you can kind of angle this off a table, but of course I'm trying to demonstrate it. So I'm just gonna use some towels right now and just open this up. I've already cheated and removed five of these. And as always, just have a cup, dish, tray, whatever to put your screws in so they don't go flying off a table. All right, gonna apply this off carefully just in case there's any cables attached. No, there's not. Okay, so there's the opposite side. You can see that these guys just screw in. So nothing too fancy there, just a metal panel. And on the inside, this is about what I expected. 
we have the screen being connected over here. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm wondering what that connection is, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Yeah, Samba JLF joystick, pretty standard there. It's all being routed to the RP2040 board. Um, we have Samba buttons there, you know, the clones for options, and they're all just you know, going straight in there. And then there's a pass-through wire there going to our USB-A. So there's a couple, yeah, those are held in by screws. I bet we could replace that. So I want to see, oh, look at that. We have USB-C going into this little board. So yeah, if we could just find a replacement little guy there, you could have USB-C. Or better yet, I'm curious, you know, it should be possible to rewire these into a full-size, uh, like advanced breakout board. Wire this, perhaps, as your USB pass-through. <clears throat> and then, or, you know, for, I think you have to replace this, yeah. Um, but still make this the pass-through and then drill a USB-C port here so that you can plug a Magic Boots in here and put a USB-C port here and have a full-sized uh, advanced breakout board in here. But as it is, it's just fine. Um, nothing too extravagant. Uh, I kind of don't like these wires crossing over, but I don't want to pull too hard on that because it worries me. I don't want to snap anything. Um, otherwise, I mean, I could do some wire cleanup, just zip tie a few bit more of this, but I'm not too worried about the construction here. It's pretty simple. And yes, if you don't like Sanwas, you want gravities, you want crowns, you want gamer fingers, there's no reason you can't put them in here. There's plenty of space for that. I'm not sure what this little notch is for. Um, there doesn't, is there a, yeah, there's a corresponding one down here. I mean, they're not going to support anything. So that's kind of wild. Now, what I'm really curious is about, um, let's get our ruler, because I want to see how much vertical height we have. That's about a little more than an inch and a half. So it's kind of tight fitting. Uh, I'm just curious, could we fit like a Samitsu le lever in here? Could we fit other levers in here? Um, I think it'd be a tight fit, but maybe it's possible. Maybe some of them anyway. I guess I'd have to try on my own. I don't feel like disassembling and putting a whole new lever in here. Okay, so that's the internals for the Titan Strike. I feel like, you know, it's it's okay layout. <clears throat> I'll just keep complaining that we don't have USB-C, but uh, especially when this connects to USB-C on this little RP2040 board we have. <laughs> Uh, but what do you do? All right, I'm going to bundle this back up and then we'll keep going. Let's go ahead and do some basic acceptance testing on the Titan Strike. Now, first, I want to do a flexion test to see if we're getting any bending. We're getting a little bit in the center, so it would be nice to maybe have a support post or something. It's not drastic. Um, maybe it's just the acrylic. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely more supported at the edges. I'm not getting anything there, but I'm getting a tiny, tiny bit just feels like. But nothing really you know, egregious or anything like that. So uh, I'll give it a pass. Okay, let's do some slide test. Now, this does come with rubber feet. We're kind of on the foam right now, and it does slide on there kind of understood so uh, I can give that a pass but just to be sh fair let's put it down on the table and see how it does it's pretty good yeah um, now those feet are removable so if you find yourself lap playing this those might dig into your legs and stuff and you can always take them off or maybe you have a cabinet you want to bolt this into uh, I imagine if you found the right screws you could do that that way it just stays perfectly secure. So lots of different options there. It's a nice touch. Um, I don't know if that was an intended feature, but 
<laughs> there we go. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to mash the buttons. All right, let's go ahead and yep, everything's working there. We don't have a directional input switch though. I imagine hotkeys, you can emulate that, so I'm not too worried. It would be nice, but it's not the number one feature I look for. Okay, that the ball top is spinning worries me and it's coming off is a worry, so I'm gonna have to point that out later. Anyhow, let's try some buttons. Yep, those all work fine. Now this is going to be your start select by default. Uh, I would probably remap this in GB2040 to L3 and R3 and then pop start over here so I have less chance of mashing into it. Anyway, let's try our, that's going to be a touchpad so I understand why that's not working. Okay, that's working. It's our L3 and R3 here, I believe. And this is going to be our home. I don't want to mash that right now because Steam big picture mode will trigger and that's no fun. Okay, so yeah, I believe all the basic features pass, so let's move on to some games. Okay, next thing I want to do is kind of do a website audit, just to make sure we're not claiming that, oh, we are just so amazing, we work on PS5 natively, as this is GP2040, you need a something there. Okay, so the third result is just Sonicon at Game Gear. I think Sega's gonna sue somebody. <laughs> but let's see if this result here is actually the product page. Okay, so we're five down, that's within my tolerance. Um, as long as we're in the first five, I think we're okay. All right, so right now, so this is recording about 160. Uh, they are going the bug fix. This is the bug fixed 1.1 version. So there's that. I'm gonna skip the video. And let's make this text just a little larger. All right, uh, robust metal casing. Yeah, got that. Uh, Sam Denshi, we're good there. Now, this is, all right, um, this claim here, we don't have the eight minute timeout on PS4. Uh, we're gonna have to check the web config to see if it has the PS4 files preloaded. And if they're doing that, that, mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a legal concern for their and not yours. Anyhow, in the yeah, classic view licks, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna see. Okay, we are saying backward compatible PS4 games on the PS5 console. So there's a whole rigmarole there. Um, I'm okay with that. It is pretty clearly stated, it's not PS5 native. You can use the Wingman FGC, and I believe the Magic S Ultimate um, to get PS5 compatibility, so there's that. All right, building command. Yeah, just hold down the bit. Okay, that's good. Uh, side buttons are just turbo font. Mm, where is that? Because I don't know if it has. Yeah, that's just home. Well, if it, I don't know where the turbo. I mean, obviously, you can set that up within GP2040, so I could replace one of these buttons with turbo, but. It's not native. Uh, okay. Our online firmware upgrade service. Well, that's more GP2040's online upgrade, so. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're stating that again. Now, this is just saying that Sony PlayStation 4 is straight out of the box, so. Hmm. Okay. Lifetime. All right, that's pretty good. Lifetime. But uh, the same with parts are subject to manufacturer warranty. So uh, basically, if the acrylics or box fails, then there you go. Uh, I don't know if that will cover the screen. I guess it will. Um, and then dual core, yeah, that's just RP2040. Okay, so I was a little nervous about that because when I initially skimmed it, it just I saw PS5 I'm like, uh, no, we don't really have, nearly had that without the pass through edition. So we're gonna have to check out the web config. Here we are in web config. Now it did ship with 0.73, and the latest is as of this recording 0.75. You know, it's not too hard to update. 
If you want to do it, you can see some of my other GP20 review videos. Uh, for example, the SGF Bridget and the file you want to use, so scroll past all this junk, is, there it is, just the Pico plane one there and download that, follow the procedure in there, you should be good to go. All right, we'll go back to this. Now the thing I want to check, add-ons. Now there is a turbo pin set, which is interesting. I'm up my shot count to 20, why not? All right, there we go. Uh, but none of the buttons I had tested as being turbo, so maybe I need to check again. That's very strange. Uh, scroll down, the PS4 mode is enabled, but it's not really possible to see if the files have been loaded. Unfortunately, I don't have a PS4 or PS5 to check, unfortunately. So, yeah. Um, the problem I have here is that if you end up having to blow away everything on here and you know, re-image the firmware, uh, not necessarily, I think an upgrade should keep it, but I'm not sure. You'll lose those files and you have to go track them down on your own. Now, I don't want to speak about the legality of providing it with the unit. Um, that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> so there's that. Anyhow, so conceivably this does come preloaded with PS4 files and it's not my problem that Sony goes after them for it. <laughs> that's just, well, yeah, again, out of my pay grade. I'm just going to kind of big question mark there as to does it contain it or not because I can't really see it just no file selected just means you haven't loaded it in this session and because I can replace all of these it doesn't show me okay these are the files that are loaded and they're working or not working unfortunately uh, well what do you do get some quick in-game footage just to sh demonstrate how the Titan Strike performs so just gonna use some lever action here I'm not a wine glass player in the least, but you can see it moves around just like a JLF should. All right, forge up by crouch. And yeah. So if you're used to JLF, then this will be no surprise. If you're coming as an upgrade, I think you'll you'll start feeling the difference. Uh, if you're used to a Korean or other lover, then yeah, you probably have to get used to it. Uh, Anyway, let's do some actual button prep mashing. So, all right, basic combo there. Now, if I really try and thrash this, there's a tiny bit of movement, but not really enough. So yeah, I can push it back and forth, and that's about what I expect on the foam. But when I'm really mashing it, I'm not getting a lot of motion, so that's actual you know, kind of battle testing that's going on. Uh, so it feels pretty good. The weight of the Titan Strike really helps out here. And again, if I took away the foam, this would be more stable. And of course, if you're playing in a lap, it's not really gonna move much at all. All right, so let's just do the thing. Oh, I missed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bop him. There we go. So yeah, you can do all the combos. Uh, if you're used to other buttons, you know, Carnival kind of Gravities or, you know, other stuff like that, and you want to move over, yeah, I'd say the buttons will move over pretty easily. Uh, stick, you just have to worry about the depth of your lever, so, versus the depth of the case, so you don't, you know, not have a fit, which is always bad. You don't want to have to cut it out and have to do other weird stuff. That would be just not so good. Uh, I think I already showed in internals how much depth you have. It's around 40, 42 millimeters. So just keep that in mind if you're shopping for a new lever. Uh, for example, if you want the Quanba Gravity GLV8 series, uh, that should fit. It's pretty compatible with Samwa stuff. So that'll work if you like that feel and like a more silent lever. Uh, the JLX should fit because it's about the same size. However, a lot of the Korean levers may not fit. Some submissives may not fit, and American lovers are definitely not going to fit, obviously. So just keep that in mind if you plan on changing out the lever later. 
But otherwise, yeah, it feels pretty good in game. I've tested it with other games, Street Fighter 6, etc. And uh, it performs pretty much like a stick and button setup should. Now, I appreciate that this has more of a gap between the lever and the buttons than a normal Vulex setup. So for example, the Mayflash at 500 and the PXN X9, those have a, like a two finger gap that's comfortable. Whereas this, I can fit three of mine at least. You get a little bit more width and it just feels better to me. But if you're used to the really tight Vulex setups, it might be an adjustment period. Now that we're back from the lab, let's talk about what I liked, what kind of meh things there are, middling things, and you know what I think we can improve upon on the Titan Strike. The first thing I want to talk about with the Titan Strike is that all metal construction they brag about a lot. And yeah, it is indeed all metal for the most part. I mean, obviously you have the acrylic layer and the buttons and the stick, but I mean, it's pretty durable. The metal gives it a nice weight. Uh, with a lever base setup, I really like having that extra weight just so I can be an idiot and sh you know flail around on the stick as much as possible. So that lends itself to that, which is very nice. Now, is the metal as high quality as say an AFS, which you know they're very well known for their metal cases? No, <laughs> no, no, sorry. It's just not going to have that level of quality. I just feel like it's a bit thinner. Um, yeah, but, you know, that's okay. For this price, that's about what I expect. Um, it's a, still a respectable enclosure. Uh, I didn't have, you know, big problems with it or anything. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, I do feel the overall, the metal case here is a plus. Now related to that all metal construction and just the size in general, the form factor, I mean, this is probably a medium, medium, large size stick as you've seen. Uh, so that means it plays really well on a table and it plays really well in a lap. Uh, both I found were very comfortable. Uh, I didn't feel like, you know, they were gonna go flying everywhere. Uh, it felt you know, wide enough in my lap that I could just relax and play. So yes, sometimes having this full size really helps and this is one of those times. You, again, table, lap, feels great. All right, next on the list of marking things that Sonicon likes to talk about with this stick is we have Sanwa parts, and that's totally true. The lever and action buttons are Sanwa. However, the option buttons are not, as we've gone over before. Now, I'm perfectly fine with that layout. Uh, if you really need to, you can replace these option buttons if you want. Um, however, I just feel the use of clone parts for option buttons is just fine, and having that little bit of extra press to them, it just kind of reinforces, hey buddy, you're about to hit an option button, you want to do that in the middle of a match? Uh, probably not. So, you know, it's kind of a benefit uh, that they're a little bit harder to press. But again, you could completely replace those with those of your choosing, and there you go. Now. Again, because you are in the Sanwa ecosystem with the JLF, you can mod that lever eight ways to Sunday, as the saying goes. You know, you want more resistance, you put a heavier spring, you want a shorter throw, uh, <clears throat> you can put in a bigger actuator, you want to have a removable shaft, you put in the link, you want a smoother touch, you put in, say, the auto, and so on, and so on, and so on. There's feels like there's thousands of products just for the JLF. Uh, so you're buying into that ecosystem, and as long as you have a lever, I think that's under 40, 42 millimeters, if you feel like getting rid of this JLF entirely, you can do that too. This It's not a bad platform. So JLF part, at least for the lever and OBSF buttons, that's a good start. It's again, you know, you have sticks with the clone parts and they're just kind of everyday sticks, you know, and this like, you know, they're pretty good sometimes, like the Mayflash F500. I feel, you know, the clone parts are pretty decent. And then you have the tournament level where they always advertise, hey, we've got Sandwich JLF, so you've got that here. All right, it feels like a year and a half, two years ago, I forecasted that more and more sticks were going to come out that were built with GP2040. And yes, again, this is one of those marketing claims that, hey, we have one millisecond response time or sub one millisecond response time. And that 
is kind of true in certain circumstances. Uh, more on that later. But GP2040, it just works. It's inexpensive to implement. And yeah, it just has a ton of features that you can use. So I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see someone listen to my past videos uh, saying, guys, don't use these cheap zero delay encoders. Go to GP2040. It's the best move you're going to make. And here it is. So <laughs> thanks for vindicating me. Uh, I'm hoping that we see the end of these budget, G zero delay, whatever garbage encoders that are out there and move just to GP2040. This next pro is pretty quick. There's included documentation. You all know how I'm a stickler for that. It's pretty nice. There is a support website or at least a marketing page, um, but I do have some commentary about that. So stay tuned. Next up in pros, uh, it's really nice how even at this price point we can get the artwork changed though tracking down the art template is tough. Uh, I'll talk about that later. It's kind of a nag of mine. Uh, what I really like to see is the ability for say at least US customers and maybe North American customers in general uh, go out to say focus attack, you know, download the template put your art in it, or have one of our many talented artists at the Arcade Stick do it for you, upload it back to Focus Text, pay that small fee they have, and then have them print it, cut it, and deliver a really high quality print to you. Again, I've used them for my AFS boxes and they work great. So, free plug for you guys. <laughs> and I just don't like that with a generic art template and they tell you, oh, just cut it yourself, because that never turns out well. So I do like the ability to print your own artwork. I just want it, you know, let's set it up to be a little bit more professional. Okay, I've done enough d gushing about the Titan Strike, what I liked about it. I mean, it is playing well. It plays fast, just like you'd expect with GP2040. But what are some of the, mm, not quite con, not quite pro. And these might be subjective things that... You know, I may like a lot, you may hate, or vice versa, and I just want to kind of cover some of those. The first thing I want to cover in the nah category is, well, I feel like the stock art is, you know, it's okay. It's nothing really exciting, but why these circles? They overlap. They don't look good. I don't like any of them. Uh, so just get rid of the circles, guys. Uh, these are bad. These, these are just, I don't like them. Uh, you can keep the label. That's fine. I understand the need. Um, but yeah, this is something you can fix by installing your own art. So it's not so bad, but uh, I just like to mm, not have those. That's all. Kind of related to the default art, and this is in MES for a reason. I'll explain that in a second, is there's no option button labels. Um, none to be found so you kind of have to figure out what does what on your own and i put this in mids because remember with gp2040 you can remap your buttons however you like so if i want to make this start home whatever i can do that uh, obviously not optimal but i don't know maybe you have a use case for that otherwise uh, it'd be nice to have just default labels though yeah, I get why. Okay, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know what's coming. We've got acrylic. Guess what? It's time for acrylic smudges. Yep. Eh, and that's really not much anyone can really do about other than using, say, a matte acrylic or something like that that kind of resists it. But then you can't see the artwork underneath. So what do you do? Anyhow, yeah, uh, just be mindful that you're going to want a towel, maybe some lens cleaner, and just to keep this clean. Kind of dovetailing with the mids are some wish list items I have. And maybe for a Titan Strike Pro or Titan Strike Elite or Titan Strike Extreme, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, the first one would be support for RGB. So clear buttons, use the gp2040 led setups i've been spoiled on a lot of like acrylic sandwich hitboxes 
and it's just pretty to look at and it's just nice touch to kind of confirm you're pressing buttons yeah we have the status panel but it's nice to have leds and it's just an it's just cool and i like shiny things i guess so that's my first wish list item the next wish list item i have would be to have a proper full-size brook style board mount inside the case that way if i want to change over from the included board to a say advanced breakout board 5.4 i can do that in, without needing to you know set up my own mount solution 3d print it or use those little stick on post or what have you something that's just more reliable and then i can just put some screws in and not have to worry about it so i think that would be great for you know you can insert a again the advanced breakout board 5.4 or above i mean by who knows by the time this gets released it could be on seven i wouldn't know and then <laughs> you could also you know change to a brook board if you wanted and plug in your buttons to that uh, there's just a lot more possibilities doing that okay going along with that last suggestion that last wish list item of you know what if i can mount a full-size board in there is to take advantage of some of the options the advanced breakout board and other gb2040 boards have such as a reverse button i'd, I'd love to see the pro have you know kind of that antagonist button down here you could press it and get a sonic boom out real fast etc um, or have a wii controller port on the side so you can plug in a nunchuck and control things that way i know if we do that though we lose the screen just work with me here i'm wish listing uh, yeah stuff like that yeah, i feel like there's little possibilities in that in a titan strike pro model or something okay i've talked about what i've liked what some wish list items are and what some kind of meh items are what about the things that are just not acceptable that really do need to be improved for the next revision of the titan strike well, let's get into those the first thing I want to complain about is, I'm sorry, USB-A? No, no, no. We've got to be using USB-C in 2023 and beyond. It's just not acceptable to use USB-A. It's a pain to use. Uh, yeah, you can go A to C, but why not just go C to C? I want the reversible connection. I don't want to fiddle with that. Uh, it has a way higher insert count rating, and it's just, it's just better overall, so... Uh, please, please just convert to USB-C as your main connection and make everybody's life easier. <laughs> next up on the list of complaints and things I feel we definitely need on the next revision of the Titan Strike is that PS pass-through port. So I've gotten spoiled by a lot of these indie hitboxes like the SGF Faust and the Boat G16 and T16. And even their mini have a USB-A port that you plug in one of these. A Magic S Ultimate or the Magic Boots 1.1 for PS4. And with GP2040, you can enable the PS5 module and get PS5 support. So you can play Street Fighter VI. You can play Mortal Kombat 1 on there. And you don't need... Well, you do need this, but you don't need any other hardware. So... This not having it is kind of a letdown. Yeah, I can use a FGC, Wingman FGC, or use just the Magic S Ultimate in the cable, but it'd be nice just to be able to plug a little module into the stick itself and work with it that way. The last gripe I have are some you know, quality issues, and this could be entirely just my review unit, and it doesn't happen to anyone else, but I felt I needed to report on it just the same. So the first thing is the lever. It is, I mean, yeah, it works, but it's not installed properly. The first thing is this ball top. I should not be able to unscrew it. That should be locked in from the factory. It should be no way for me to just unscrew it that casually. Uh, that can be an actual issue during gameplay. So. Remember, this needs to be locked in before it goes out the door. Number two, let's move that aside, is these dust washers. Uh, there should not be two of them. There should be one, and one needs to go right underneath the case, but before the joystick body. And then the other one gets mounted like so. 
Now these issues I can fix, absolutely. I removed joysticks before, it's not a big deal. But for a everyday customer that just wants to buy and play, this is not something they should have to do. Is this going to wreck the controller? No, but you know it does offer that little bit of extra protection, which is why they're dust washers. So other little quality issues, and let me get this threaded back on. I've noticed there's little creases in the artwork underneath here. Uh, it looks like just scratches, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, minor things, but you know, you have your quality. It's you know, it's a thing. It's, it's kind of a thing. Uh, and I did notice just kind of some paint inconsistencies on the edge here. Um, I mean, not a major thing. Not something that's going to affect whether you can win a match in Street Fighter, obviously. I didn't have any issues like that. It's just little fit and finish things. Uh, now, another little thing, and it's kind of dumb. I don't expect this on indie boxes, but on kind of production manufacturer boxes, I would expect you know a name imprint, a model number, serial number, etc. Down here. Uh, yeah, again, it's a minor thing, but. It's kind of giving that image of quality, right? That you're making a consistent product, you'll stand behind it, here's where to go in case you have issues, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these are little fit and finish things that just kind of detract a little bit from the experience. It's time to wrap things up and I'm going to ask my usual two questions. Who is this for and who is it not for? and also give some overview TLDR thoughts at the end here. The first group of people that I think are probably going to pass on the Titan Strike are those that you know, you're looking for something really innovative, really different, and not just, hey, it's a stick and button setup. Uh, now, this is not a bad stick and button setup, but you, know, you don't have, say, cross-up buttons or an antagonist button or really exciting features. I mean, you, yes, you do have GP2040, yeah, you have a turbo feature, but that's nothing new. Uh, you do have the status screen, and that's kind of cool, but mm, there's really nothing horribly new here. We've had GP2040 controllers for a little while now, and just there's no different layout, there's nothing there. So if you're looking for something really exciting and different and fresh, yeah, this is really it. The second group of people I feel the Titan Strike may not be for, and this kind of applies to GP2040 base controllers in general, is, well, let me ask you a question. Do you feel comfortable updating the firmware on your computer, say your phone, your video card, uh, any other electronic product? If you get really nervous, you feel like, oh, I'm going to break that, it's not going to work for me, I'm scared, I don't want to do it, then yeah. GP2040 comes out with updates fairly regularly, I'd say three to six months, depending on. And if you're not comfortable updating the firmware, you're missing out on bug fixes, new features, which you may or may not be able to use in a build like this. And yeah, you're just missing out. So if you don't feel comfortable getting into the web config, making changes, tinkering, then you're not taking advantage of the full power of GP2040. And well, this may not be as appealing to you. It's, we're not at the state yet where GP2040 updates are as kind of plug and play as Brook updates are. So with Brook, obviously you you know run the firmware installer. You t you know it tells you okay, just hold down these buttons while connecting your controller. It then will tell you hey, do you want the tournament edition? Do you want the regular edition? You select it. You hit go. It does its thing, and there you go. Your Brook board is updated. This takes a few more steps, but I feel you get a little bit more control over it. For example, you can you can and should do a data backup, and then after the fact, you can make sure all your settings are there, etc. So uh, there are trade-offs there, but I think overall there are a bit more steps to follow in a GP2040 update. The third group of people I feel are not going to appreciate the Titan Strike are, well, I've already said it, I've complained about it, why don't we have USB-C? This is just not a thing that should be happening. Uh, USB-B I would be fine with as well, but USB-A to A, it's just a bad idea. It's not 
it's not good. <clears throat> if you're going from USB A on here to C, then okay. Um, those cables are pretty common. Uh, you know, you could run to Best Buy and get one. Let's say you forgot your cable uh, or have Amazon ship you one, whatever. Uh, however, an A to A cable, uh, good luck. You're just not going to be able to pick one up in a pinch situation. So let's say you fly to an event and you realize, oh no, I don't have an A to A cable. There's no way you're going to be able to borrow one because no one has that. It's just an uncommon USB configuration. Uh, they may have a C to A cable, so you could probably, you know, if you're playing on a PlayStation 5 which has C ports, you could do that, but it's better to just have C on here in the first place. It's 2023, and soon to be 2024. USB-C has been out for years. It's time to adapt to that. All right, I've been mean, so let's tell you about who I feel the Titan Strike will appeal to. And I feel like for the price, you are getting a pretty decent controller. Now, I will talk about the build issues later in my overview, my final thoughts, but you know, presuming that we iron those out and this is just a one-off fluke, you know, the ball top coming off, the dust washers being wrong, etc., then, yeah, you have a pretty solid metal body. You know, maybe not the best in the world, not, you know, especially compared to AFS, but it's still pretty good for the price. You have the JLF and OBSF, so Samba parts for that Turner grade, where it counts. Obviously, again, the option buttons are not but those are not something you generally run to to you know do anything with so I'm fine with them being the clone parts to save a little bit of money that's great and I mean it's also customizable so you can change the art out uh, there could be better ways to do it you know have the art template available on the site partner up with focus attack and other places to provide you know, printing cutting etc I think those can be ironed out over time so yeah, again, for the price, I feel like you're getting a pretty good, solid platform. Uh, like I said, for those of you who are looking for new, exciting, innovative, exotic, not really here. For those of you looking for a solid build, yeah, it's here. So what are my overall final TLDR thoughts on the Titan Strike? I feel this is an arcade stick that sets out to do, you know, the fundamentals pretty well, and without a lot of frills or just, you know, innovative new features, right? Uh, sure, GP2040 might be innovative, kind of, uh, but as far as, you know, like player interface features, you're not getting, you know, extra buttons, you're not getting RGB, you're not getting stuff like that, and, well, for the price point, I, I totally understand. We're focusing more on the fundamentals, you know, you've got a great metal case, it feels nice, has not a lot of weight, resists mashing, plays well on the lap, plays well on the table. So that's all great. You pair that with Sanwa parts, you know, the standard tournament grade stuff. There you go. You have a great baseline for controls. Uh, you know, if you want to change those out later, you can. No problem. And at the heart, again, you have GP2040. So you're delivering good performance overall. Uh, Sure, not as compatible with stuff like a UFB might be, but you can get, say, broke adapters and that sort of thing, and you're set. So there's that. Now, what are things that must change in the future? Uh, once again, I don't like that A port. I know I could work around it with a low profile adapter, just plug that in, and now it's C, but I don't want to do that, right? It's just why should I have to buy extra stuff, right? That, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, for Titan Strike 2.0, we definitely need to have that GP2040 pass-through so that you, know, you can plug in the Magic Boots or whatever adapter and get PS4, PS5, or soon Xbox compatibility, which I feel really extend the applications of this stick. Uh, as far as other stuff, and I've got to talk about, you know, the quality issues. I'm really, 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 really hoping that's just a single reviewer unit issue, and it's just affecting me and not you. Uh, if you unbox a Titan Strike and, you know, the ball top's coming off, well, that's bad. Uh, sure, this is a 10-minute fix, um, 
you just open it up, do the thing, and then you, know, you should be set, but it's not something that should be happening. And a lot of customers will just go, uh, nope, I'm sorry, I'm sending this back. It's not performing the way it should. And you know, you just don't want to deal with that. So the ball top is honestly an easy fix, but why should I have to fix it, right? I, I can get plenty of controllers out of the box that don't do that. Double dust washers, you know, takes a little longer because I have to remove the entire lever and put it back and it's solved. Or, you know, I'll probably just install a link if I'm going to do that. Um, buttons were fine. The little creases in here I can fix. And, you know, the circles I don't like on the artwork I can fix just by getting new artwork. You know, I can't print off at focus attack quite yet. Hopefully that'll change in the future. But, you know, it's not impossible. Uh, so, really, most of the issues I've seen, I can work around myself. But a customer that's not inclined to do... DIY stuff, you know, mod stuff, they'll probably just send it back and be done with it. So uh, that's the downer with this, is just if these issues are happening with other Titan Strikes, then yeah. I'm choosing to hope that it's just my review in it. So there's that. Overall, though, I think let's pretend, you know, that the issues don't come in your Titan Strike. Feel like this is a good contender for you know a stick that just does the fundamentals and does them well hey y'all you know what time it is i've got cute kitties they're sitting on boxes you know what more could you ask for well if you found this video informative educational helped you make a buying decision or you just like the cats now's the time to hit that like button if you have questions suggestions or comments you know leave them down in the comments section below Really appreciate it. And if you tag me in, I'll usually answer within a day or two. Finally, if you want to see more content from the Arcade Stick, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You know the deal. You've seen a million other YouTube videos. And someone's getting squirmy, aren't they? Yeah. Also, if you want to see the full text write-up on this review or many others, or you're looking to commission an artist, check out the Arcade Stick's website in the link below. Yeah, he, he's excited. So thanks, everyone, and look forward to the next video. The Arcade, the arcade, the arcade, the arcade Sticks.